Hi guys, my name is Allison Smith and I'm with the Johnson County Park and Recreation District and I'm the Corporate Community Wellness Coordinator. We're here at Shawnee Mission Park and we are behind the admin building at our very first employee gardens. And I'm here to talk to you because it is National Gardening Week. Hi, I'm Emily Wheeler. I am a MNU counseling student that is currently an intern in open access in Shawnee. Um, today we are joining you from the Garden Gallery Demonstration Gallery, which is a mass extension master gardener run garden. Hi, my name is Dennis Patton. I'm with Johnson County K-State Research and Extension, and I am the horticulturist in charge of ornamentals and our extension master gardener program. And I am standing in the beautiful garden gallery located here at the Sunset Office building. And this is one of our extension master gardener demonstration gardens. We actually have nine of them around Johnson County for the general public to come and enjoy and view. And this garden is really designed for the, the homeowner, the home landscaper. It's a collection of over 600 plants, anywhere from small shrubs to trees, to perennials, to annuals. And it's just a really great place to come through and see what plants look like in their native habitat. So the benefits of gardening and being outside and among nature um, are widely regarded to help boost your serotonin, they're boosting your dopamine, um, it's known to lower your anxiety levels, um, and it's also really good for your self-confidence when you are able to have a plant that grows and blooms and is so magical and wonderful. So another great fact about gardening is that as kids we encourage kids to play. We encourage them to get outside and move around and move their bodies. It makes them happy. Yet as adults, we kind of don't play as much. Gardening is the best way to play in the dirt and get that fun and creativeness out. And it's, uh, it's super amazing to see everything bloom. The statement that I think sums up how gardening affects me or how it helps my mental health is I consider mowing my quiet time. It's my time to de-stress, just think about what I want to think about, nothing else. And you know, I think also for me, it's just that touching the soil, seeing something grow is just so nourishing for the soul. But I think every aspect I do in the garden just lowers my blood pressure, calms me, helps center me, uh, helps me forget about all the daily pressures of life because there's nothing better than going out and picking that red ripe tomato, seeing that beautiful flower and knowing that you had a hand in making that happen. Gardening isn't just about growing vegetables and fruits. It can also be about plants. It can be about mowing your yard, yard work, anything to do outside where there's plants involved. And the whole benefit of that is because as kids, if you remember, we loved playing outside. We loved making mud pies. We loved getting with the dirt. That is because dirt is delightful. It really is, which sounds crazy, I know, but it's awesome. As far as what easy plants might be, you know, if you're indoors, start with a couple house plants. Choose something that's lower light. If you're outdoors, you know, a container on your patio, front porch, your balcony, could be just a, a, some annual flowers, you know, like some zinnias or marigolds. If you really want that uh, reward of harvesting something, you know, the number one crop people grow are tomatoes. And here again, they can go in a pot, they can go in the ground. And so I think those are some easy to grow plants. It's always best with gardening, start small, because it's easy to scale up. But what happens if you get too big, too fast, and you're learning, you become overwhelmed, and then that puts stress in gardening, and gardening is to take stress out of our life. So some different ways that you can get into gardening if you don't have a yard or you don't have a large green space to actually grow anything, a simple pot or bucket or some type of container, you can grow whatever you want in that, whether it be lemongrass, something as simple as some flowers or even some nice cherry tomatoes. Those grow really well in containers. So other easy plants to start with, um, if you're wanting to do herbs, you can do a herbs inside in your windowsill. Um, there are plenty of um, kits that you can buy from pretty much any big box store that will allow you to grow cilantro, it'll allow you to grow basil, parsley. So if you're ready to start venturing outside and get even more interactive in your dirt, 
Um, raised beds are a great opportunity to start with fresh soil, with good compost. That's where you can plant all your vegetables. You can plant flowers. You can plant natural perennials that will attract pollinators. There are a ton of options for everything that you can plant outside. So even though it's already June, it is not too late. You can still put plants in the ground. Um, there are perennials that you can plant pretty much year round. If you want to continue gardening into the fall, there are lots of options that you can have. Um, and their Extension Master Gardener office has a fantastic um, handout that shows you when to plant what and when you'll get to reap those benefits. There are several varieties of winter vegetables that just love the cold and will do best when planted either in early January or late into the fall. You know, the Kansas City climate for gardeners is fairly unique. We actually have three growing seasons. We've already passed the spring season. That's when we put all the cool loving crops in like the pansies and lettuce and spinach and radishes. And then we have what we call our warm season which would have happened back in May where we plant those delicious tomatoes and peppers and then our summer annuals. But actually in fall, Kansas City has a really wonderful growing season also. Planting somewhere late August, September, you can have a lot of things growing, blooming up into you know frost, Thanksgiving, depending on the plants you put in. So it's always a good time to get started in the garden, no matter the season, or like I said, you can grow year round with houseplants indoors. So if you're that novice, new to gardening, of course, the first thing you're probably gonna do is turn to the internet and you're gonna Google or search for something. And the internet, when it comes to gardening, has really good information, has really bad information. So of course there's YouTube, all those type of things, but I would have you refine your search if you're gonna go Google gardening information, search extension EDU sites. But Johnson County Extension has wonderful resources out there. We have publications, fact sheets, uh, all sorts of literature. If you're new to vegetable gardening, Kansas Extension just updated their Kansas Garden Guide. So search Kansas Garden Guide. It's like a hundred and some pages of gardening here locally in the Kansas area. So use Extension. That's what we're here for. You know, you can Google us, come search for us. We have a gardening hotline, so you can pick up the phone, email us with your lawn and garden question. And we have Extension Master Gardener volunteers, myself, that are more than ready to help you. So there are resources here locally. You don't have to get it from some other place or some garden guru on YouTube that thinks they have the best way to grow tomatoes and make sliced bread. Everyone's going to fail at some point in time. And failing is great. I mean, because it's usually a learning experience to you. You know, you put the wrong plant in the wrong location. It doesn't rain, you forget the water, you know? So failure is part of gardening, but I, I don't really consider that to be a failure. To me, it's part of the learning, the growing process itself. And if you have not killed a plant, you have not gardened. Because every gardener is going to kill a plant. You know, a lot of times when I do classes and workshop on a specific plant, I'll say, okay, uh, how many of you have grown hydrangeas and raise your hand and how many people have killed a hydrangea and I raise my hand and wave it proudly because that's kind of part of the fun of gardening is trying to experiment learn what fits for you so enjoy the process and learn from the process and then learn learn from it so you can improve the next time around or maybe consider it three strikes out I'm never planting that plant again which that's my rule of thumb if it doesn't make it two or three times I'm not trying to again it's not for me so another thing that you need to remember is that it is perfectly fine for your plants to die. Um, I discredited myself and I wasn't going to join the Master Gardener program purely because I couldn't keep anything alive. Um, but gardening is, is the best place to learn and grow. Um, it is the best way for you to get out there and try things, try new plants, try starting from seeds, try hydroponic gardening inside, anything you want to try, it's okay if it dies. It's not a reflection of you. It's not a reflection of how hard you're willing to or not work on something. It is just showing you a new way that you can do things. There's other ways you can still get involved in gardening. 
there's a lot of what we call community gardens around Johnson County. And this is where you'd rent a small plot of land, usually for vegetables. So you can go garden there. They provide the soil. All you need to do is provide the blood, sweat, the tears, the plants, and make it happen. If you want to volunteer opportunities, check around. I mean, there's various opportunities to volunteer the help at the Overland Park Arboretum, Johnson County Parks and Rec, other locations to volunteer. And of course, if you're really passionate about gardening and sharing others, I would, re I would be remiss if I didn't say, well, check out the Johnson County Extension Master Gardener Program. We're over 500 volunteers who just have the passion of gardening and sharing that information with the community. They also have a gardening hotline, speakers bureau, they work with kids. And so if you really love volunteering and gardening, then come check out our Extension Master Gardener program. So how's that for a shameless plug? We also have community gardens available here at JCPRD. Our Verhegg community gardens are sold out for this year. However, I know that they're gonna have more garden spots for next year. Other local park and rec agencies or even some apartment complexes or homeowner associations also have a community garden as well that you can get involved with. Another way to find more community gardens where you can get involved with is using social media. And that's the cool part about social media is you can find so much on there. And it's a great way to get connected and to learn more about plants. And that has a ton of benefits. You're getting to garden, you're um, making friends, meeting new people, you're socializing, which we know brings down stress levels. Um, and it's also exercise. You're getting out and you're bending over and you're working with your hands. Um, it's an excellent, um, an excellent way to get out and meet new people and also garden. So the Extension Master Gardener program is great for anywhere from entry level, you have no knowledge of plants, all the way up to you are a master arborist and you just want to spend more time in gardens. The Extension Master Gardening Program is currently taking applications for this year's new class. So come and join us and become a Master Gardener.